Mr. Ateki Seta Caxton, can you tell us more about your organization? New Seta is a youth-led organization created in 2013, focused on youth empowerment and policy advocacy in Cameroon. We try to accomplish these particular goals by research, trainings, and actually doing policy advocacy throughout our work. So we actually have current campaigns that are going on right now. We have a campaign to reduce the voting age in Cameroon from 20 to 18, known as the Vote 18 campaign. We have a national program known as Repair, Rebuilding Peace to Actions with Inclusive Reach, which brings thought leaders from all the 10 regions of Cameroon for two semesters to have trainings on peace, democracy, youth leadership, and participation. When you say we, can you tell us who is part of the executive structure of New Setter? New Center is actually a youth-led organization. So we have our board, for example, is made of young people. Our program staff is also made of young people. And I think I'm the, the eldest. I'm just 33 in the organization. So it's a youth-focused organization. And when you say youth, can you define the age group you are dealing with? In Cameroon, the legal conditions for being youth is between the age of 15 and 35. And that is in the youth policy document of 2006. There is also the African Charter on youth, which recognizes youth to be those between the age of 15 and 35 as well. You organized this event in Yaoundé. Can we know what was the motivation behind it and who was your target group? The program repair really targets young thought leaders, leaders of organizations, non-governmental organizations, and even those who want to get into the field of practice in democracy, peace, development. We launch a call for application basically as this category of people, young people within the age range of 15 and 35 who are involved in democracy work, peace work, uh, governance, accountability, all of that so they can apply and get trained to be able to enhance the work that they're doing on the field. So the program is structured in uh, two semesters. So the first semester focuses on democracy and peace. I mean, to try to contextualize our training to respond to the current situation in Cameroon, but also tries to make sure that young people themselves can go out back to the field to give out what they have acquired through the trainings in what we call step down, pass it on activities. And then when they carry out this pass it on activities in the different regions, the report to us and that's the precondition which permits them to participate in the second semester of the training, which is what is going on right now for the second semester, which actually is the last phase of the training and where they get the certificates of completion. How many participants are taking part in this second semester? They are the same participants that took part in the first semester that are taking part in the second semester. So we have 40 young people. And maybe a reminder, I wanted to emphasize that the, through the different step-down activities, the young people reach out to a minimum of 30 young people in the field, which are their peers. So they now pass on what they have acquired through the trainings. And so when we accumulate the number of people who are touched directly through the work that we do through this program, then we can talk about 1,200 young people that we touch on our lane. You're talking about young people and democracy, but the observation we make in Cameroon is that young people seem not to be so interested in politics, registering for elections, and voting. That's what we've observed from the field. Like young people are not really taking part in elections. They're not voting. They're not even interested. And actually, sometimes you say young people who are under 30 are not even represented as candidates. And since they make up largest section of the population, about 60 to 65 percent, we're not just talking about an apathetic generation. We are talking about an apathetic population. But the thing is that we cannot give up on young people because we have noticed that they're not interested in that. What we need to do is rather see that as an opportunity to bring them into the you know, mainstream of political participation by training, by giving all other opportunities that can help them to develop positive citizenship values and so on. And this is why we are interested in developing programs like this. What will you say to youths who will seem more or less discouraged that they don't have the means to actually take part in elective politics standing as candidates and they seem to be discouraged that the elders have confiscated everything? One thing is that you know, young people don't need to give up. That's the first thing, because you can only access spaces when you are capable of managing those spaces. And so there are things that young people need to do. The young people need to build their capacities, and the power that young people have does not reside in instantaneous change, like being there right away. If they organize themselves and take gradual measures, they can be there, given some five years, ten years, they would be there. So the narrative, how this 
problem has been discussed is that young people are not there currently and so they're not viewed as competent leaders. But I'll tell you that I've seen young people who are making a difference in the field. I've seen young people in other spaces which are not effectively those that you have to sit in a position and make decisions. Young people are demonstrating leadership and you can see that, for example, let's take those who represent us in international competitions. Let's take the national football team. They're under 17. They recently won the African Cup of Nations in Tanzania. These are young leaders. Everyone was moved by their participation. It's not like they must be able to sit in decision-making spaces. It's true that there are a lot of things that have to be adjusted in terms of creating an enabling environment for young people to participate. When you look at the age of running for the Senate, for example, the minimum age is 40. I think it's too high. When you look at other countries that are more advanced than us, France reviewing its age for those who run for the Senate from 35 to 24 in 2008. So we getting it this high looks like we don't believe in our young people. We don't feel like they have any contributions to make to the development of Cameroon. So I think Creating that enabling environment is very important, but also training young people to be able to fill those capacity gaps that they have, you know, to be able to take leadership and practice it and do it in a way that everybody is going to be comfortable is very important. But also we need to help them already develop those skills at the moment. We have something they call positive youth development, and positive youth development is creating opportunities and support systems for young people to contribute in ways that are valued and respected. You also talked about peace as one of the activities in which you are in what is really your involvement in peace initiatives? You know, they say conflict starts in the mind. And if we have to resolve conflicts, we must begin by the mind. People will not go to war if they don't first think about war, if they don't first have it in the mind. So what we try to do is inculcate values of good citizenship in our young people because it begins from there. If young people are exposed to other sorts of doctrines, then you would definitely find them behaving in ways that are not socially responsible. That's one of those things that we try to do, the advocacy. If we say young people have to wait until they're 20 before they can have a chance to vote, what happens to them before they're 20? They're exposed to other values. They're exposed to other things. There's no emphasis in our educational structure that really tries to drill young people in terms of political participation before they reach the age of 20 and start voting. And that's why when they reach the age of 20, people say they're not interested in voting because what precedes that, it's just a very loose and very weak process. We're living in a situation in Cameroon where peace is in danger. What are you doing about it? We had a national consultation of young people to hear from them what exactly are the challenges that we are facing when it comes to having social cohesion, living peacefully in Cameroon. And so it was just not really focused on the Anglophone problem, which is the current issue at hand. We looked generally, because there are other things as well that would cause social strife, we tried to exploit youth unemployment, which is something very, very crucial. Many governments today are trying to invest in youth entrepreneurship and uh, easing the barriers of access to the labor market just because they know that this is a way of trying to accelerate job creation and mitigating the problem of unemployment, which is a very strong issue that can lead to social strife and conflict. So that national consultation basically tried to make some recommendations to the government. Like, this is what we young people from all the 10 regions think about the current situation in Cameroon and what we feel should be done. And so they looked at issues from the policy dimension, from the institutional dimension, and from the programmatic dimension. So at the policy dimension, they were trying to advocate legal reforms that we can cite, like the reduction of voting age, which is a constitutional thing. For example, our youth policy has not been reviewed ever since it was created. We have the anti-terrorism law, which people feel like there's some sort of discomfort with which people can be able to go when it comes to trying to use different arguments such as national integrity and uh, you know national sovereignty to be able to kind of quell down on democratic practices. If there's any youth out there who is interested in what you are doing and want to get in touch with you, how do they get to you? They can get to us through our website. If they go to www.newsetter.org, they can actually see the work that we're doing. And then there's contact information there. Our email is info at newsetter.org. And our mobile contact is plus two three seven six seven seven nine one eight seven six five. Mr. Ateki Seta Caxton, Executive Director of the Network for Solidarity, Empowerment and Transformation for All, New Seta. It was a pleasure having you as guest on the CRTV. It was a pleasure talking to you.